responsible for kind of looking at health issues. And yes. those Could either of you two talk about some of these other services that you provide through Head Start other than just the ABC123 part of the program? Um, what, what other things do you take under consideration when working with these children? Well, of course, we would take, uh, take into consideration their health okay. and health issues. And so we have a uh, health center uh, provided by, uh, through Methodist mm -hmm. uh, Medical Group um, there at the center. Uh, and that's open four days a week, uh, okay. basically on Monday and Wednesday is mm -hmm. uh, uh, 9 to 12 and 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. And on Tuesday and Thursday, it's uh, basically in the afternoon from 1 to 4. So mm -hmm. though the so we actually have a nurse that is on staff that is there uh, the, to answer or to try to help with um, the physical uh, mm -hmm. uh, needs of the child. Uh, we have uh, other kind of services that we provide as far as with re referrals. Um, we refer them to whatever the needs are. Um, say for an example, there's. Um, some educational issues. Mm -hmm. Then we try to make referrals to uh, GED programs mm -hmm. uh, that we have locally or if there is uh, some uh, food issues. Of course, our food mm -hmm. bank and uh, things along that line. The, whatever the service that uh, Community Action Agency provides, we try to steer them towards uh, Community Action Agency and to uh, make sure that we can connect the service with the person and the mm -hmm. person with the service. Do you provide any kind of food or nutrients to the kids when they're participating in the program? Is that part of their day when they're there in terms of receiving either a yes. lunch or a breakfast or whatever? Could you kind of comment on what nutritional uh, experiences these kids would have while they're part of the Head Start? At Webster, the half-day center, the children get snack and breakfast in the a.m. session, okay. lunch in the p.m. session, and uh -huh. snack. And at the full-day centers, they get a snack in the morning, uh -huh. lunch, and a snack in the afternoon. Very good, very good. And I'm assuming that through the comprehensive service delivery system of the Community Action Agency mm -hmm. that sponsors this, those meals or those snacks are prepared right within in the own agency and, and delivered to the sites? Yes, they are. Yes. Uh, also, it's, um, uh, it's according to, again, um, federal guidelines uh -huh. to make sure that the kids are getting a nutritional meal, both the snacks and the meal itself. Very good. So we make sure that the kids are not just uh, filling their stomachs mm -hmm. with just anything, but mm -hmm. with a good nutritional meal, uh, both at uh, snack and breakfast and mm -hmm. lunch mm -hmm. uh, that we provide. Well, I'm glad to hear that because I've also heard recently on the news that there's been questions about the nutritional value that the kids are getting in schools in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of junk foods, a lot of things with too much sugar or mm -hmm. too much salt and that type of thing. So well, obviously you have someone on staff that kind of reviews as well as you have the federal guidelines yes. and requires that certain things be included or not included, am I correct? Yes, you yes. are. Okay. We are concerned about um, uh, the child's eating, mm -hmm. um, simply because there seemed to be a study about a lot of obesity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to make sure that they're not just filled again with a lot of junk food, mm -hmm. but a good nutritional balance, breakfast, uh, lunch, mm -hmm. to make sure that they have, uh, they're getting what they need, whatever the the daily requirement is that we try to make or uh, help them along that direction. Is there a uh, registration time? Is it open enrollment where a parent can contact you anytime or do you have a specific time when you begin to take the applications and the children start in the program? We take application all year long. Mm -hmm. All year uh, long. There's a, uh, there's a thrush or a push that uh, becomes greater uh, after the kids are out to make sure that all the spots are filled. Okay. Once they're full, then we go to uh, having, we'll still take the application, mm -hmm. but then there's on a wait list. So it's, it's better for the parents to try to get those applications in as soon as possible to make sure that their child has a slot uh, in our program. Mm -hmm. uh, and with uh, some things are being cut from District 150 and, and so forth, there, there's going to be a little bit, we're anticipating probably a more of a, a more parents that will try to get in and, and get their children mm -hmm. into our early uh, education uh, program. Well, I certainly would, would hope that'd be the case. Kimberly, about how many people uh, or kids 
are enrolled in Head Start? Six hundred and seventy children. Six hundred and seventy children. Yes. Wow, that's that's an, a quite a large program. Yes. And then you multiply that by the the family, mm -hmm. you're reaching a lot of individuals during each school year as far as the Head Start program. And again, I I, I think that that's wonderful that here in the Peoria area we have a program such as Head Start. Mm -hmm. have been having this program now for a number of years. I guess mm -hmm. it goes back into the mid-60s or so. Yes. I'm not yes. really certain. So actually thousands of individuals have benefited to, from the services of Head Start and particularly people like you in terms of working with families and yes. working with the parents. And I want to compliment the two of you for a job that is very much needed and I can be pretty much assured a job that's being very well administered as far as your areas. I'm getting cues that uh, this segment of the program is about to come to an end, but I wish the two of you well, as well as the rest of your staff members in terms of the, the valuable service that you are providing to our community and our families, and even more so our little youngsters. Yes. in terms of their climbing up the educational ladder mm -hmm. and giving them a head start so that they will not be behind once they move into the educational system. We're going to take a break and uh, we'll be back and have another important segment to uh, include some other services that are offered again by Community Action Agency as we again celebrate the national as well as the local Community Action Agency. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. For facing the frightening news no woman wants to hear with courage and embracing the reality of losing your hair with dignity. For carrying your kids' memories into chemotherapy while clinging to the collective faith of your family. For confronting fear as broad as the mountain is tall. For my Aunt Ronnie, who proudly emerged from it all. Victorious. Cancer is affecting us in record numbers. Get information about treatment and prevention at cancer.org. Welcome back. I'm so glad you came back and hopefully during the break you may have called some of your friends or neighbors. As you can see, I have another special guest and her name is Heather Carnahan. Heather, welcome to Captions. Thank you. And it's my understanding that you are part of the program, the Early Head Start. That's is that correct. correct? And about how long have you been involved in the Early Head Start program? I've been with Early Head Start for a year now. For a year. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. And you are part of a historical program that has a major impact not only here locally but nationally and that type of thing. What is your area of responsibility, Heather? What do you basically do there with <laughs> Early Head Start? I work as a bilingual parent educator for our Prevention Initiative Program, which is the state-funded program um, beneath the federally funded program of mm -hmm. Early Head Start. Um, I do the same thing that everybody else does. We do home visits with our families socializations, and we also provide um, English as a second language classes and GED classes for our families. 